Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, we are going to be focusing on our Uber Prober, the second set of Mars probes that will be reaching Mars in two days and 20 hours. But before that, I want to talk about our planned moon mission. And we have two, two parts to the moon mission. The first part will be the actual lander and uh, return system, you know, how we get them back home. And then this part, this part is the transfer stage, which will push the Kerbals to the moon. And it's basically an S4, which is the second stage on a Saturn 1, not the S4B, which would be the second stage on a Saturn 1B or on the, or on, or the third stage on the Saturn 5. But this has six RL10s on it and burning for the maximum amount of time. And by my calculations, that should be enough to push a 36-ton craft to the moon. So the craft will dock with it. Right now, it looks like it has a whole lot of delta V, but that's because we don't have the the craft docked with it. It's also carrying a fair bit of uh, Arizona N204 for the RCS thrusters to help with the docking. I don't know if this is enough RCS thruster power. And uh, looking at this, I just realized I forgot, oh, well, at least one thing, possibly two things, so hold on. Uh, first thing, we need electric charge, because right now we've got a Thor avionics unit, but unlike most of the other probe cores, the Thor avionics unit doesn't have any power inside of it. So we should also sneak in some electric charge, let's say 9,000 units. We do have solar panels, so that's good. So we will restore our power. But then the Arizine there. Okay. And um, it's its uh, its drive mass is reading 6 tons. Which is a little bit surprised. I guess the tanks are really heavy because it's cryogenic. You can see that the, yeah, the tanks are fairly heavy. So that's why. But uh, this is the burn time limit. So we can't set it for any longer for these engines in their current configuration. And um, antennae. I forgot about adding... The ability of this to communicate independently of anything else, which could be important. Three should be enough. It's just got to be in low Earth orbit after all. And let us make sure to action group stuff. Okay, so that is the idea, and that's on top of the Nico 944, but I've made some changes to the Nico 944. I've uh, reduced the timing of all the stages uh, in the hope that we can get more thrust to weight ratio and uh, therefore get to orbit more efficiently and you'll note that the S4 stage is 50 tons which is partly why I wanted a 50 ton capacity in the first place so uh, I've reduced the timing of the first and second stages by 10 seconds and reduced the third stage to six minutes flat and uh, hopefully that will help us you'll note if you add up these numbers that gets close to 9,500. If we have to complete orbit with the S4 stage, that's fine. It's got a fairly high starting thrust to weight ratio and a really, really high ending thrust to weight ratio. Uh, but that's without the payload, remember. Uh, there's 36 tons that I'll be pushing, so it really won't get that high. All right, so we finally unlocked the Gemini capsule and we've had to do some unlocking and that's why our funds have dropped by 500,000. Just the Gemini capsule was uh, 270,000 to unlock. I, I'm not entirely sure it was worth it, but I want to try and bring two Kerbals to the surface of the moon to you know, properly challenge the Apollo program. And so this is the system. Incidentally, uh, if you didn't see it already, uh, you, you can tell how big this rocket is uh, now just uh, sort of judging it by the size of the Gemini capsule, right? The Gemini capsules about are small by comparison. I had to unlock the Soyuz heat shield because that's the only one that would properly fit the Gemini capsule. Um, there. It does fit, but otherwise it didn't have anything that fit and we couldn't tweak scale anything to do it. So, yeah. This is the ascent stage from the moon. And so this is actually, not only is this going to be the thing that will uh, be coming back home, it's also our lander can. We're not going to have a separate lander can. It'd be too much because this is just two tons already. So there's no point not bringing it to the surface of the moon. The heat shield is not that heavy. So we can bring it to the surface of the moon and bring it all back. That's fine. This is the ascent stage. 
and um, well, it's got 2,200 meters per second, which is as much as we need to get off of the lunar surface and into orbit. Uh, these are the engines. They are the advanced Gem Gemini lander engines. Seems appropriate. Uh, except we're not actually landing with them, we're taking off with them. There are four of them on this stage. RCS thrusters, of course, solar panels, and ladders. The ladders are down here. I put a pair so that each Kerbal can use one. Uh, but it's not strictly necessary, but who knows. Decoupler, of course, and then this is the descent stage, powered by four Asterisk engines. Now, we haven't actually unlocked landing struts. And in fact, uh, when we finally do uh, get to landing, unlock the technology landing, we'll only get the micro struts. We're not going to get larger struts yet. And in order to unlock landing, we have to unlock miniaturization, so it's going to take some time. Uh, we're right now working on improved electrics. So after improved electrics, it's miniaturization and then landing, and then it's only the micro landing struts. So I don't know how that's going to work out for us, uh, trying to land on these things. Yeah. But this stage has close to 2,600 meters per second of delta V, which is enough. And the Gemini lander uh, can uh, can control 20 tons. And so you see the ascent stage and descent stage combined, just under 20 tons. So quite deliberately. And you can see the thrust weight ratios are reasonable for the moon. This is the stage that is going to get us into orbit around the moon. And then once... Uh, everything is done and the ascent stage uh, brings this back into orbit. You can see the docking port on top. This will dock with this and this will then send it back to Earth. It has a thousand, call it 1,500 meters per second. 800 will be used to get into orbit around the moon. And then that leaves 700. But by the time it uses that 700 to send the crew capsule back, uh, this part will be gone. In fact, most of this part will be gone too, uh, most of the fuel anyway, not the actual stage, because we need the solar panels and the food and all. Uh, this has a little uh, Gemini nose fairing on top. I didn't trust the, the Agena docking target, basically, because the only other docking port we have is this rendezvous and recovery section fairing kind of port. Um, it's got a docking node. And, but that seems to only fit with this Agena target. I don't know if it would fit with anything else, so I didn't really trust it. This, I didn't have a fairing to put over it, so, and trying to put it on here, which is the part that would need it, uh, I, I didn't figure out how to fit it on properly. So we're just using these uh, docking ports, which are propellant only. Hopefully that little nose cap will protect us from the atmosphere and also get off at the right time. Uh, we've, we're using Air Xenon N204 for the thrusters here. We've got parachutes that are not actually configured properly. Hold on. I need to configure the parachutes properly. So Earth, uh, we'll use these as the main chutes. We'll have triple chutes and uh, pressure pre-deployment. Let's say 0.3 for these. Um, uh, I have to do that without everything attached. Hold on. Otherwise it's going to try and configure the parachutes to carry everything. There we go. Much better. Apply to all symmetry counterparts. Okay. And then this drogue shoot, drogue shoot. Uh, we don't need that to be a triple shoot. Drogue. Pressure point, point 0.2. That should not have changed our delta Vs very much. In fact, it improved our delta Vs, so that's nice. We, uh, we were carrying too much parachute after all. Okay, so that's how these stages work. The bottom here has nine of the Gemini lander engines. So we're really making use of these. Very handy. And that's mainly because of the size of them. If you take a look at them, uh, they're sort of little pug things. Actually, for some reason, they're placed in fuel tank. But they've got 11 kilonewtons, and they're relatively small, uh, physically. The Asterisk engines are just physically a little bit larger. Uh, they're also more efficient than the Asterisk engines. So, I am using them. 
you notice that the there is a Thor avionics unit on this uh, this little stage here and electric charge and also communications so if necessary it can be used to do the docking yeah uh, the you, you will ask about the launch escape system oh it's not letting me go back into the VAB and uh, there isn't one I'm not entirely sure I want to mess too much with that I mean, the launcher can handle four more tons if you want to put a launch escape system on top here, I guess. But we don't actually have a pre-built one, so I would have to build one... A custom, a custom launch escape system. Maybe necessary, unless there... Uh, well, there's this, this one, Mercury. I guess the Mercury one would work. Well, I've purchased other things. Let's unlock it. There doesn't seem to be a... Well, the Gemini... Gemini didn't use the launch escapes. Uh, they, they would eject. They had an ejection system, not a launch escape system. So we, we can have it like that. Doesn't seem to have its own decoupler. So I guess I'll just mount it on top of the Gemini nose fairing. Okay, there you go. Uh, you, you would have wanted a launch escape system. Now we have one. Uh, you, you might have noticed that I named the Kelly. And this is Gemini Capsule, so maybe you'll be able to put two and two together to figure out why it's called Kelly. Alright, so save. And 51000 for this. Let's take a look at the cost of the S4. Because I, w I have to figure out how much we want to test these things ahead of time. We only have 500000 This is an extraordinarily expensive rocket. Probably because of Gemini Capsule, isn't it? Uh, if we move curve alarm clock out of the way, the Gemini capsule alone is 5,475. Compare that to the Mark 1 pod. Everything will be easier if, well, okay, the Mark 1 pod is pretty expensive too. All these are very expensive, turns out. So it's not much of a savings to send just one Kerbal. We do have enough life support, by the way. Uh, well, call it uh, 12 days, uh, 14 days on the oxygen. Okay, the cost of this is 44000 So the entire cost of one of these missions is roughly 100000 So, yeah. We, we don't want to mess up on this. Uh, good thing we've tested the rocket, right? We've tested Nico 944 once. Uh, we've got the, the issue that the procedural parts have there. I'll fix that later. We'll think about when to build this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with the Uber Prober Mark II, if you will. Actually, the Mark I, because this is the first one we launched, but it's the second one arriving at Mars, and we are in Mars SOI. So what I want to do is bring our periapsis up, because we do not have the heat shield to air brake with. Otherwise, this would be a fine air braking altitude, but right now we can't do that. It would also take me uh, 15 minutes to turn off SAS so I could do this turn more efficiently with the RCS. Ignore the variations in the Delta V, that's because of the gimbling of the main engines. Our situation is like this and the main thing that we really need to do is make sure we do the Phobos flyby this time and you know uncrewed Mars landing and uncrewed Deimos landing would be the bonuses but we absolutely need to do the flyby. Capture is going to take at least 2,190. If we bring it all the way down to Deimos level, it's another 170. And we're not at the right time to hit it. On the bright side, our previous missions are in place to provide communication support. You can see one probe there. Uh, that's the act actual main body of it communicating back to Earth. But we've got another probe there that will occasionally communicate with that one. And also one in orbit around Deimos, right? That's a huge relative inclination, isn't it? 28.2 degrees. Surprising we couldn't do any better than that. Wonder how much combining and inclination adjustment here would cost us. Let's uh, let's experiment with that. 
up oh, before we do this let's make sure we'll have communication oh yes we'll definitely have communication back to earth at periapsis it's very clear so that's a good thing for the rest of this though maybe not for the encounter side the, uh, so if we have the periapsis here or apoapsis over here uh, so when we encounter Deimos or Phobos we'll probably have Mars in the way that's annoying we'll need some sort of relay then okay here we go making orbit around Mars while I'm here I should get the antennae on all the missions out it's got to take 15 minutes to do it anyway. Might as well have them prepped up. I suppose instead of bringing it into orbit first, we could have actually let this one go suborbital, you know, on the initial periapsis. Just dropped it off right there so that it would head in at that 55 kilometer periapsis. Probably would have worked out for us. And then we wouldn't have to bring this additional load into orbit with us. Could have saved a bit of fuel like that. But then again, it'd be entering the Mars atmosphere really hot, and it doesn't have a heat shield, so it probably wouldn't have survived that. Now, last time, the drogue chute on here did not deploy properly, so we will uh, fix that. I've said toggle info, but it'll take 15 minutes for that to come up. Actually, closer to 16 minutes, isn't it? Okay, that's a 14-hour orbit, which is fine. Oh, it's actually lower than I wanted it. Shoot. Um, is it actually lower than the orbit of, well not quite, actually it happens to be just about touching the orbit of Deimos. Well anyway, let's focus on the Mars entry mission first. Okay, so... P-deployment altitude one thousand, uh, ten thousand. Sorry. That uh, that uh, this five thousand worked fine, right? Um, let's say this. Because it's hard to figure out the pressure. Uh, the, the pressure that uh, would be good on Earth doesn't even exist on Mars. So we can't go by that. Let's tighten up like that. This says main shoot and secondary shoot. I don't think is this a drogue shoot or not? It might not be. Maybe I should treat it like it's not a drogue shoot. Thought I configured them like that, but doesn't specify. Okay. So out to apoapsis. Wonder how much it would take to correct our inclination out here. Just let's check. Uh, 334 or so. I'd only do that if I was like desperate or something. We could try hitting Phobos with a uh, maneuver out here boosting up. There we go. Phobos encounter. It'll cost us 320 though. But let's let go of this probe. That, that'll be in a good amount of time. Two days and 21 hours. That's not what we need to do right now. Decouple. And oh darn that'll take a long time. Okay after we decouple <laughs> uh, we will activate that engine might as well arm the parachute heck might as well uh, tell some signs to happen uh, analyze telemetry oh we need to unlock fuels this engine is active parachutes armed and let's get some preliminary data shall we oh we actually got some signs for the telemetry data okay well transmit Nothing for the gravity scan, because we've done that. High over Midlands, done that. Done that. Oddly, not atmospheric scan 
high over Mars, so we can transmit that for 24 science. Good thing we checked. All right. So we've got our RCS. We're not pointed. And uh, the RCS is still overpowered. But SAS is not on, so that's good. I'm trying to figure out what altitude. I'll go for 48 kilometers. Now, these guys will snap off. But hopefully, uh, we'll be close enough to where our mission can keep us in contact. Okay, so here we go, on to Mars. Oh, we just briefly lost connection, you know, I'm gonna be annoyed if that happens. Though again, periapsis side, we should be good on communication. No excuse for losing connection there. Now, before we hit periapsis, about 15 minutes before, we should do all the things. Because we still have a signal delay to worry about. That will affect everything except for orientation and throttle. But what I'd like to do is do some science. And uh, do some science in the atmosphere. Uh, I should deactivate antennae with a plan to reactivate at the surface. The antennae are still not retracting. How long do we have for that? Got some science, some attempts at using the action groups, more science. One deactivation in six minutes. That's going to be too late. Hmm. Well, we might lose some antenna na antennae. Now, the core has its own... Which got communication device. It's short range though. Gonna go find controls, but taking a look at the actual thrust being output doesn't seem like find controls does anything. Again, I can't turn off RCS and take 16 minutes. Speaking of which, I will once again queue up some more science on the chance that it will happen when we get to the surface. We get this nice surface here, but in other installs, for some reason, I don't get that. Interesting. Mm, depending on how we tilt, the solar panels are in jeopardy. I, that didn't happen with the previous one, did it? I don't remember that. Maybe we should use some throttle to avoid that. If we slow down a bit, maybe it'll avoid the heating. Maybe it's good now? Or not. Ah, we lost one. Thankfully the solar panels aren't very heavy. We should be coming straight down now. Yeah, thankfully they're not very heavy, so it's not going to unbalance this too much. Not that smart ASS would care, it's still going to fire all the thrusters all the time, but... Typically I would want to reserve 400 meters per second for landing. So we have enough. Let's make sure we have surface info up. Our antennae actually survived, surprisingly enough. Weird that the antennae survived, but that one solar panel didn't. Well, annoying oscillation is annoying. Okay, uh, we've got some science flying over lowlands. Transmit telemetry. I wonder if just aerodynamics would hold us about right. Okay, pressure scan flying over lowlands. Transmit. Oh, where'd it go? Hey, I didn't transmit that. You can't take it away from me. Review data. Oh, uh, review data is going to take another 16 minutes. Oh. Uh, 
it'll ask me whether it wants me to overwrite the data and I don't. Uh, no, that's fine. Transmit before it decides not to do anything. Well, we'll get some science. Okay, Geiger counter, transmit, 42 science. We are racking this stuff up, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Tell that one to activate again. Communication-wise, um, we're still ahead of the relay satellite, so that's good. As long as uh, we're not behind the relay satellite, which would be bad. Because we're slowing down. Well, we should be on the ground by the time the next set of data comes in. Okay, waiting on parachutes. Uh, we should probably keep ourselves to retrograde now. Oh, that is lopsided on the whole parachute thing. Shoot. That doesn't help us at all. Yeah, could we get a parachute that isn't lopsided? Okay, full parachute deployment of one of them. And the other... Okay, well, at least that's pointing us retrograde-ish. Ish. Okay, maybe we can manage this. Oop. Ouch. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Stop, stop, stop. So off. Uh, so I'll say anything until it... Uh, okay, we were landed. It wants telemetry analysis. Analyze telemetry. We probably already have that one queued. Let's let's queue up uh, another instance of all the datas just in case. But we have to get the telemetry analysis one for the contract to be fulfilled. Let's hope our satellite remains above us for the next five minutes or so. Ooh. Okay, try and submit that. Uh, no, I, I just want to... Transmit that, whatever it is. Transmit. Uh, micrometeorite, transmit. Telemetry analysis, transmit. Please. It worked. We fulfilled the contract. All right. So, successful. We we have a success. We lost one solar panel, but other, and the parachute situation was weird. Must have misconfigured it, but... We have a success. Landing on Mars. Now these are going to happen again. A lot of times. And I guess... I don't know if I change... If I change mission, I don't know if they linger. Let me just clear them out. Still need to review that barometer data and make sure it gets transmitted. Then I suppose we should do it again at the surface, huh? And transmit from the lowlands. All right, we're up to 556 science. I think we gained about 500 science from this thing. And of course, most importantly, contract fulfilled. With some margin, by the way. Okay, now on to the rest of the mission. All right, I have restored our node in order to encounter Phobos. Without the Mars probe, we now have 753 meters per second. So we're slightly unburdened. And all we have to do at Phobos is fly by. And, well, we have to recover any experiment. It doesn't have to be telemetry or anything. Any experiment on a flyby will do. And then we have to head for Deimos. And it'll be easier to land at Deimos after flying by Phobos because we've already lifted our orbit by this 320, let's say. So we won't have to do that. Because otherwise, in order to get into orbit around Deimos, we would have to uh, do this amount anyway. So it's, it'll be beneficial either way. Lessons learned from our previous experience. Okay, so this is two days and 14 hours, so I'll come back to you when we do this burn and make sure that happens at the right timing, which is always tricky. Okay, we're approaching the node. One good thing about this arrangement is that we are actually meeting Phobos on the periapsis side, and so we will have good communication with Earth. If we were going to meet uh, Phobos on this side, that would be worse. So let me try and manually get us to the node instead of having Smart ASS do it. Another lesson learned, of course. 
Make sure none of the probe fuels are being consumed. They are not. Now there is an open question whether we want to try and land a probe on Phobos. I suppose we should. Instead of trying to do a double attempt at Deimos. So we'll try and land a uh, probe on Phobos. And risk maybe failing the Deimos one. Okay, uh, forming up here. There it is. And we'll have a Phobos periapsis arbitrarily low. Let's set it for five kilometers. Um, maybe six kilometers. I don't know where the time warp restrictions are at. So hopefully we won't be restricted in time warp for very long at 6.6 .6 kilometers. And that leaves us with 405 meters per second in this stage which uh, will, it will be more once we let go of the probe. Okay. Now 15 minutes before we get into Phobos encounter, I'll start the science. Let's do that now. Okay, so letting go of the probe. Decouple, that'll take uh, 60 minutes. And we'll have to activate its engine. We'll want it to Log pressure data, log temperature data. Okay, off we go. We have connection. It was off, uh, it was no connection for a little bit there. Okay, that, yeah, so some of the science is being done outside Phobos SOI. We're 1 minute and 25 seconds away from Phobos encounter. Um, the gravity scan over Mars lowlands. Who knew? Okay. Um, I don't know what the other micrometeorite detecting thing is, but probably wasn't too important. Okay. We have a minute and 40 second burn time. Ooh. Uh, things are a bit choppy here right now. I don't know why. Well, here they're fine. Okay, it looks like whatever it was, it resolved itself. Okay, retrograde. And yeah, it's a bit choppy. And we need to start burning right away. Oh, we're not going to be able to slow down. We're going too fast. Hopefully we can at least get some science done. And not hit the surface. We're getting awful close. How long till science? Okay, 11 seconds. Okay, we should at least get the science. But we're not gonna make orbit. Phobos is harder than Deimos, as you can tell. Okay, transmit. High over Phobos. High over Phobos. And we fulfilled the contract. Yep. Deimos flyby. And even though I tried to land on it, it ended up being a flyby. Yep. Okay, well, we're going to have to have a more powerful method of slowing down. Um, maybe, nah, even on the next pass, with an with orbital velocity of 740, 143 isn't going to do any good. So we're stuck around orbit. Um, we were bringing down the orbit from Deimos. Uh, we should have been able to do that. I'm surprised we couldn't have done that a little bit better. Oh well. So currently for those keeping track we're at 747 science and now we've almost recouped the losses incurred by unlocking the Gemini pod and other parts for our moon mission. So we're almost back up to a million funds. But we still got a lot of work to do. One more thing left, trying to land on Deimos. And you know how much fun that tends to be. So let's target Deimos. We would like to actually reach it over here if possible. So let's see if we can manage that. Hmm. Oh, well there's one if we want to risk being blocked by Mars. 
I get the feeling that because I'm doing it on this side of the of the node, it's not giving me the ones on the opposite side. I mean, I can wait. I mean, this probe, that's really close though. This probe isn't going to lose power. Yeah, but even if it's really close, I don't want to risk not having communication. So option number two, uh, raise it a little bit and then uh, come around again. Okay, well this is a bit more complicated than I thought it would be. But basically we're doing uh, two maneuvers. And let's take a look at maneuver node editor. First one, 203. Second one, 129. So we have the fuel. And that'll get us this sort of orbit. And maybe, maybe it'll let us plot orbit around Deimos to see how much that would cost. 300, uh, no, not 300. 34 days, though. So we're losing some time here. Oh, no, it's not going to let us do that. Okay, forget I asked. Okay, well, we'll try this as is. But, you know, landing on these things is difficult. We'll see how it goes. Hold, maneuver, prograde, execute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm. I don't remember telling remote, uh, remote tech or flight computer to actually execute that node. How did it get that idea, I wonder? Maybe I shouldn't have been so afraid of being blocked by Mars, I don't know. It would have been an easier approach if I had just met it at our current apoapsis and not been concerned about communication loss because of Mars. Okay, we have a Deimos periapsis in four days rather than 34 days. Um, it leaves us in a very sort of lopsided orbit, which means it'll probably take more to actually make orbit around Deimos once we get there. I really wish you would let me just plot that, but if I go retrograde here, will it let me? Uh, well, that's an orbit. Let's see how much it costs. 692.5. Seems like a bunch. We'll have to see how that works. Now, the main body of this probe pack will remain in orbit around Mars. So once again, we'll have another, another little thing helping with communications. Didn't have to specifically place satellites. We just uh, did our missions and we ended up with a bunch of stuff around Mars. As it should be. Oh, no, in a full day. Okay, I was, thought we were approaching. But it's next orbit. Well, we have an encounter. Um, we can... Oh. Lost it there. Uh, not as close as we we had it plotted, but 17 kilometers. And we have 102 meters per second left in this. Okay, well, encounter in 23 hours. Uh, it occurs to me that we can't really use... Well, if we time it right, we can use this part to help us make orbit, but otherwise... We have to separate off the probe, huh? And we have to do that ahead of time. Our total encounter time is not 16 minutes, which is uh, roughly our delay. 16 minutes and 9 seconds right now, or closer to 10 seconds. Okay, okay, okay. Right here, let's decouple and activate engine okay that should be the right timing and we should uh, well we've already done the demo science it's all about landing really so that'll that should be within demo sphere of influence 
but after we might be able to spend the three seconds to slow down using this. Everything is very uncertain as you can see. Deimos, master of uncertainty. Okay, we are in the sphere of influence. Let's quickly, well, let's check how long we have. 41 seconds, okay, retrograde. All right, we've used up that fuel. Let's wait until we decouple. Spinning around and around. Hopefully we'll have enough time. Okay, we have decoupled. Unlocking fuel. Okay, uh, retrograde. And... Uh-oh, uh-oh, I passed route to... Oh, shoot, let me just do it on my own then. Oh, boy. Okay, things are changing quickly. Oh, shoot. Maybe it'd be better just to get Smart ESS to try to do this. We're losing a lot of fuel again. You know how this is. We've done this around demos before. Oh, shoot. It's really far off. And we're not going to make it. Yeah, this particular probe design, whoops. Not, oh wow. Look how far it is from actually trying to point up retrograde. It's really not helping. Next time we'll just send something to land on Deimos. We've done all the other things. A very robust lander. We will we will tame Deimos, but we're not going to do it this time. And there's the SOI chain. Well, it's a very uncertain. Look at that. It's going in and out of Deimos SOI, and depending on whether it's in or out of Deimos SOI, it uh, changes the color of Deimos. Told you, Deimos, master of uncertainty. What does this look like on here? Ah. Uh... Well, I think we're, we're officially out now because it's not changing back and forth anymore. Okay, so that was the fate of this mission. But well, at least we got two of the contracts done. We just have one left and we've got plenty of time to do it. We've got, uh, what you got, uh, 1,571 days to complete that. I think we're well on our way to completing it. We know what we need to do and how we need to edit these particular probes to make it happen. So that should be straightforward. Now, the real challenge is trying to get to the moon, and preferably before July 20th, 1969, the actual date that they set foot on the moon. So that is our challenge, and we will try and do the testing. We now have a lot more funds, so we can do some more robust testing of the systems, though it's, time is still a constraint because we have to build the rockets, which will I, I, I think it should only take a hundred days or so to build each rocket, but uh, then there's the matter of the capsule, and I don't know if that takes a lot more time than the rocket itself has, the Nico 944. Okay, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.